This is Twit. Mike in Alhambra, California is next. Hello, Mike. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Oh, hi. Uh, hi, Leo. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I was just wondering that I just got the uh, Internet, and I just wondered if... if uh, Wait a minute. You just got the Internet like you just got it? Uh, yeah. Nice. You hadn't. You didn't have it before. I, yeah, I never had the internet before, but I signed up for it. And I, uh, but what I want to, what I want to know is if there's any computers that can uh, as, talk to you, you know, or, or in Braille. Uh, yeah, they're both. So you're, you're. I, I take it you're blind. I am. Yeah. yeah. So do you have a screen reader in general? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't really. Okay, so you just got a computer too. So the, uh, there are a lot of blind users use computers and smartphones. Uh, there are two ways to interact with it. The normal kind of, you know, most common way is with a screen reader. And there are a lot of screen readers out there. Are you using Windows or Mac? Do no, you know? I don't I have anything yet. I just... I just got... Uh, oh, okay. Internet. Okay. So uh, when you get a computer, if you get a Windows computer, the problem is these are very expensive, these programs. They have a, a limited audience, and for some reason, this is very commonly the case. We call this accessibility, the idea of giving people with different abilities access to the computer, for instance. And uh, accessibility programs are way overpriced. I think they assume that you're going to get support from local government or from an insurance company or the veterans or somebody veterans is uh, you know but uh jaws is the best known one that works with windows and it's a screen reader now i think it's a little time consuming because you have to listen to everything be read on the screen but it does give you accessibility, and uh, I know many, many blind users who use it. It's very popular. It is expensive. If you don't have the support of an agency, there are third-party screen or, or other screen readers. There's open-source screen readers. There's one called Orca. Get it? Orca is like a JAWS. But I don't know if Orca is easy to use because it's open-source. Um, the other way you can go, you, so if you're if you're affluent with Braille, if Braille is a good way for you to go, I have seen and it's amazing. People use Braille screen readers, and what it does is it connects to your computer via the USB. You don't have a screen, obviously. This is your screen, and it raises the thing is uh, raises dots. So it actually displays for your fingers the contents of the screen on this Braille screen reader. Also very expensive. This one I understand because uh, it's, it's technically very uh, sophisticated. It's called a refreshable Braille display or Braille terminal. <clears throat> and there are, that's another thing to look at. Uh, are, you know, you could go to the American Foundation for the Blind or local organizations like Lighthouse. I don't know. Are you in touch with anybody uh, in this regard? No, I haven't been in touch with anybody. Okay. So if there's any organizations for blind folk in your area, call them because they'll be able to tell you all the things that are out there. They'll be able to help you set it up. And maybe, more, most importantly, they'll be able to help you pay for this because they can be very expensive. I, I've seen these uh, Braille screen readers. They're amazing. Uh, and they give uh, their users complete control of the computer as if they're, they have vision. You don't need it. You're, you can see with your fingers. So it's very, very cool uh, technology. But again, like JAWS, it's going to be expensive. <clears throat> and somebody's going to have to help you set it up because you're new to computing. So somebody's going to have to explain how all this stuff works. Now, another important point, and this is for everybody listening. It's called... It's, it's called accessibility. If you have a website, you want to make it accessible. And, and one of the things that means is having text representations of everything on your site, including images. And, you know, HTML, with the language of the web, is, is, has a cap capability of doing this. You can specify what's called an alt tag. But it really is important that you think about your website when you make a website and think about somebody who might be using a screen reader or a refreshable Braille display to, to read that screen and make sure it's accessible. 
So this is a very important issue for anybody who designs websites. It, uh, web accessibility. There are web accessibility evaluation tools. You can point at your website, and it'll give you a grade. In fact, uh, the World Wide Web um, Association has a list of web... I'll put a link in the show notes at w3.org, a list of accessibility tools. There used to be a great one called Bobby. Unfortunately, it's disappeared. But there are other uh, replacements. Accessibility means more than just screen reader. It means using contrasting colors appropriately so that people who are colorblind can, can look at your site and understand it. There's all sorts of things to think about. And a lot of us uh, just don't think about it. So I want a, a little plug to make the web accessible um, for people like Mike who are new to the Internet and want to, want to look at your site. Why wouldn't you want to make your site accessible to all, right? That you, you want the most people looking at it. So there are a number of tools that you can use if you're a web developer. You should have at least a few of these in your back pocket to check and make sure that you're doing the right thing uh, so that Mike can use the web. Welcome to the Internet, Mike. Um, it's, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not an expert in this, so what you need to do is find a local organization for the blind uh, that will help you understand what's out there and uh, and maybe help you get it all set up and everything because it is it's not a it's not an easy thing to do, and I'm sure there are blind people uh, in your area that will help you. I'm just looking if you go well you you don't have internet access but maybe you can access yet <laughs> until you get this accessibility going, but there are a lot of organizations in, in the Alhambra area that can that can help you, um, and the state of California has. Uh, you can send them an email at blindaccess at, um, what's the email address? At dss.ca.gov in the state of California. And uh, there are lots of people who can help you. There's California Services for the Blind. There's a lot of different things. Worth, worth doing. Oh, and yeah, you're right. Kim, thank you. She actually uh, already gave Mike our listener. I forgot all about Julian who has volunteered to help blind people exactly this way, get online and stuff, techjv.com. Again, if you're just new to the Internet, this is all going to be kind of overwhelming. But uh, Julian is blind himself, and he does training, consulting, and support for people who are blind wanting to use things like the Internet. It's great. You, it'll be a whole you know, wonderful world available to you. So I, I think this is uh, worth pursuing. It'll be a challenge, but... You know what? I know you can do it. 